B, hepatitis C, Ebola, and MAPAT viruses, of which our concentration for real will be on hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and Ebola virus. Also, we'll touch some part on uh, MAPAT viruses. Uh, starting with hepatitis viruses, uh, hepatitis viruses, these are a group of viruses which are principally affect the liver cells and cause inflammation. So these are HEPA, HEPA, hepatic, something going to liver, is it? You remember, eh? So hepatitis virus, they mostly affect what? The liver. That's the main center where they affect. And the liver cell, what they really cause is inflammation. That's, called, that's why it's called hepatitis. In there is something of inflammation there. So example of hepatitis virus transmitted by contact with, are the hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C viruses. But for you to know, there are other kinds of viruses which may not be transmitted by the same route. For example, we have hepatitis A, hepatitis C, uh, D, hepatitis C, E. Nowadays we have G and other hepatitis type. But these are the common ones which causes a lot of trouble, especially in terms of health. And we have the hepatitis A kind is more causing, more causing the something called diarrhea can cause diarrhea and you get it through oral fecal contamination. So that's the hepatitis A. Then we have hepatitis E and mostly again can be caused with the oral contamination or oral, oral uh, fecal contamination. But these two, hepatitis B and C, they can be caused by more than these routes. We are going to explain, we are going to see other routes which can be used by these type of, uh, of viruses. And the major thing that they have happened to this kind of virus is they cause inflammation of the liver, which may complicate to other conditions, as we are going to see. So, uh, characteristics and structure of hepatitis B and C. Hepatitis B virus uh, is a member of the virus family, and hepatitis B virus is DNA enveloping virus, and has icosahedral and nucleocapsid core containing but partially double-stranded cellular DNA genome, and the envelope contains protein called the antigen, hepatitis B surface antigen. So it has something called what hepatitis B surface what? <coughs> Can I repeat this sentence? The envelope contains a protein called this surface antigen, which is in bracket hepatitis B surface antigen. Repeat. The envelope contains a protein called surface This is the media diagnostic criteria for you. We mostly, when you are going to test, we test something called what? Hepatitis B surface antigen. That's what we test in lab. So if you are thinking maybe your patient is having uh, this kind of disease, you will always ask for the test, which is uh, hepatitis B surface what? antigen. This is the test most we are going to ask because it is very presentable and very unique for this kind of uh, virus. This is the schematic, uh, uh, schematic uh, of hepatitis B virus and surface antigen. As you see, uh, we, have, we see the hepatitis B E antigen. We see the hepatitis B surface antigen. There are some places there you can see them, appreciate. Then we have partial double-stranded, you see inside, the DNA polymerase. We have also the hepatitis B core antigen. All of these, they are used as sometimes in terms of diagnosis and progress measurement of prognosis, prognosis and uh, diagnosis of disease, you can use one of which to tell if what is happening uh, can be safe. Actually, the summary for replication of hepatitis B virus, mostly you will see most of viruses, the way they do, they are almost, they move, they, they move on the similar path. Most of them move in the similar path, of which we have the attachment. When they attach themselves, mean that there is a receptor whereby they go and form and coating. They move themselves from that big shell which they were encapsulated. Now, the host DNA repair, the, 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 the copy of DNA also are doing transcriptions. Whatever happens inside, translation whereby the, the protein are made. Then, what happened now, we can see the, the, encapsulation, uh, the, the, the encapsulations happens. Then, all other system happen to the point of exit. Those are just the things which happens in the real process of Side. But hepatitis, we have the hepatitis C virus, which is a single stranded. We say the hepatitis B virus is what? A double stranded. This one is a single stranded RNA. 
ya virus plus plus family plaguridae genus hepatitis virus it's an enveloped virus as well surrounded by protective shell of protein those are important component and further encapsulated the lipid part envelope of cellular material the genome of where but as you see virus is highly mutable meaning that it is in the risk of changing every now and then they change they are highly what mutable and by constant mutation the rsc virus may be able to escape the post immuno immunological detection and elimination therefore it is very tricky to treat this kind of uh, or to deal with this kind of virus because if we can mutate mean that today if you prepare a certain army to fight against this virus tomorrow it may change presenting another way therefore your body immune will won't find it again is it therefore due to mutation behavior of this kind of virus it's very difficult again to attack fight or to deal with this kind of virus even your body will fight a lot to find a way to, to eliminate this kind of this kind of virus so whenever you find whenever you hear something mutable something which can mutate easily means that there is difficult in terms of body treatment there is difficult in terms of your body uh, fighting with that, that particular disease for a sea virus it has a uh, layer you see uh, you have seen there by layer the, the green kind of the e protein and also we have the nuclear capsule to see inside then let us talk a little bit about hepatitis b now we have seen the summary of it now let us talk a little bit about hepatitis b virus but as b virus infection is the disease of global significance when you say of global significance mean that it, uh, it has a medical importance in terms of uh, the way it affected it because at last it affected human health and again it can complicate and goes even to the socio economic and other it has other burdens in the families and national life mostly this happen when you have the chronic hepatitis which is the most dangerous spectrum of disease because when you have uh, this uh, chronic mean that you may end up having liver cancer liver cirrhosis and other condition which mimic those uh, condition globally over 240 million people um uh, being affected of which 650,000 deaths are reported annually a lot of deaths yeah. so this always always tell us the significance of this disease the african and western pacific countries have almost 68% of all chronic hepatitis b virus infection global you can see the percentage is high in these areas especially in africa and most of the african countries 99% are in high in higher to intermediate and high endemic zone with a hepatitis b surface antigen seroprevalence of 5 to 7 and also greater than 8 respectively so when you see greater than 8 you mean that these are high endemic wati zone when you see 5 to 7 you mean that these are wati intermediate now tanzania is regarded to be high endemic country <coughs> So the prevalence of uh, you, uh, this hepatitis B virus infection in Tanzania has been reported to be 6 in general population in Dar es Salaam. This has been reported. But we, I can tell you there are very little studies which have been done in this area as well. Therefore, we may have underestimated what the prevalence. Maybe the pre prevalence is more higher, but because we have just uh, done some studies now, we see this prevalence. This is a very big problem. 6% is high percent of people who are infected with this type of disease. And why it's a very big problem? Because the route which are used for this transmission are more likely or higher than even HIV. There are almost similar routes of which put to the risk most of the wati young people. Therefore, that's why we say this is a very big problem. The disease caused by hepatitis B viruses, actually the virus causes serum uh, hepatitis characterized by persistence infection leading to the chronic hepatitis means that chronic inflammation of the liver uh, it can go to the liver cirrhosis liver cirrhosis means that it, your liver now changes to the normal structure those cell and morphology of the liver changes now you have fibers like within the liver of which now liver fails to perform those functions of the liver uh, the way it performs you remember that it, liver has a lot of functions is it it has a, a function to pro for production of protein it has the function for production of what? What else? Mobile, is it? It has the function for production of a lot of enzymes. It has the function to produce clotting factors. 
is it? It has a function to produce what else? It has a function to store the glycogen, is it? So there are a lot of functions which are performed by the liver, of which if the liver is affected, means that automatically those functions which are performed by the liver are no longer there. And automatically now, you may end up having other diseases. You may have edema, <coughs> you may have edema because now the function is low. You may have uh, bleeding, uh, uh, bleeding um, diseases because now the clotting factor are not produced, is it? You may have a number of diseases, now you, we won't be able to store uh, some glycogen because now the liver is not functioning well. Therefore, when you are thinking of the uh, impact of the liver in terms of being infected, it means that you have to think on the function of, all, of, of the liver because the way they are affected means that all those major functions won't be what it performed by the body. So I plus B is not directly uh, cytopathic, it still demand the liver in immediated by immune matic response. What happens actually, this virus goes to the liver. When they go to the liver, livers identify that these are the foreign things, these are antigens. And for that reason, the liver will uh, mount the immune. When it is fighting, then it is still, it is keeping up more production of the cell, which may end up leading to the cancer or it may invite more other things like formation of other uh, inflammatory cells coming there fighting, causing granulocytes and the, even uh, other, other, other components which may endanger the liver. So this virus can cause the acute infection, of which the acute infection is counted up to six months. <coughs> After six months and above, that's what we call what? Chronic. Are we together? So we say this virus can cause an acute infection, which appears six weeks to six months, after exposure, as well as chronic infection, which lasted for more than six months. Mm -hmm. So we say chronic if your body won't be able to clear this type of virus. The possibility that your body immune may clear this virus, but this is very difficult for young people, especially for infants who are born from the mothers who have been infected by this disease, because as you know, the young people don't have immune. The immune is still very low, is it? And they are growing up, that's why they make the immune to become strong. Therefore, when they are born with this kind of disease, while the immune is not well, not well functioning, there is high possibility for them to acquire this disease for life because the immune won't eradicate this type of disease. Are we together? So, uh, for, yeah, for all the people who the immune are competent, there are possibility that there are some people who may end up having lack of, uh, of eradicating or removing this disease or eliminating this disease in their body. But most of the people end up having this disease for life or end up forming the immune, which again, complicate, causing a lot of problems within the body. So, uh, it is common for acute infection to become chronic, very common, and the probability for someone becoming chronically infected with the hepatitis uh, B virus is inversely related to the age of infection. Inversely related to the age of what? Infection. So, the more you are younger, the more the possibility for you to form what the chronic disease. The more you, you, are, you, you are young, the way you, you, you acquire the disease means that there is high possibility for you to what to live with that disease to the point of having chronic disease. But if you acquire it maybe in the, uh, in the lifetime, like in, other, in, in, in age, like in 20s, 15s, where the immune is strong, there is high possibility that it, it cannot even cause a lot of problems. But we have something called the acute hepatitis of which you get infected these days, some few days you die. Are we together? So infection at the earliest age increases the chances of becoming chronic carrier of the virus. Thus, babies born in infected mother are very at very high risk of becoming carrier and developing liver body pathology. Have you seen the, 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 the essence of the sentence which I mentioned that it, the common the acute infection become chronic, the probability of someone becoming chronically infected the uh, HCV virus is inversely related to what is the age of infection. Those were explanations. So, uh, how do we get this hepatitis B virus? Number one is sex. That's why I was, when I was trying to talk, I say major roots that are used for the infection for, 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 for causing infection during HIV. They are the ones which can be again cause or make a, someone get born in this type of disease. Of which number one is sex. You can get it if you have unprotected sex with someone who has eaten or your partner blood, saliva, semen, vaginal secretion into your body. So, this disease complicates more even than what is HIV. It's very hard for you to get a HIV through a kissing if you don't have oral thrush or oral ulcers. 
but kissing with someone with this kind of disease gives you almost 100% of getting this disease. Are you together? They say that this disease is almost 30 times infectious compared to HIV. Are you together? So it's more dangerous compared to even HIV. So you can get it if you have unprotected sexes with uh, someone who has it, or partner bloods, or maybe saliva, semen, vaginal secretion, and enter your body, your body. Sharing needles again, and same as HIV, virus spread easily via needle and syringes contaminated with uh, infected blood, accidental needle sticks, healthcare workers mostly, maybe you're in theater, you're doing something with regard to a patient, or you're trying to put cannula, or you're trying to uh, do something with regard to a patient when you're using something, sharp objects, you'll find yourself maybe a uh, love, uh, love, love stick, stick to yourself. That, that, may, that may cause again this disease. Mother to child, so pregnant women with MSB can pass this to their babies during childbirth, uh, but there is a vaccine to prevent newborn from becoming infected. This has to happen within a 72 hours. That's why most of babies, when they are born, they first thing that they receive, they receive some of the vaccine, one of which is called BCG. The BCG vaccine is one with RT, this type of RT, uh, uh, protection. So what are the symptoms for the RCV virus? When you are first infected, the warning sign includes jaundice. The jaundice, this is the yellowish coloration in mucous membrane in your eyes, uh, will come out yellow, but for those people who are white, yeah, they are, they are, they are, they are color of, uh, yeah, they are white people, they show a uh, uh, yellowish decoration like that in Fanta, yeah, kind of. You know how is that Fanta? The yellow color we are talking, the jaundice is this way. Okay. This is the color that you are talking. Therefore, if someone gets uh, infected by this disease, most of the time, you get this color. Why you get this color? Because one of the function of the liver is to convert the what? <coughs> convert what? To convert it by bilirubin from direct to from indirect to direct <coughs> bilirubin. Of which now, if the liver is not functioning well, there is accumulation of indirect what? Bilirubin. The accumulation of indirect bilirubin won't be excreted through the normal route, which is the kidney. And for that reason, they keep accumulating within the blood. And as they keep accumulating within the blood, what you present is the, uh, the color, the yellowish color, in all those areas which can show changes of the color. But if you are not sick from this disease, your liver is functioning well, automatically now, the indirect bilirubin will be converted to what? Indirect bilirubin. The short story on indirect bilirubin is, the indirect bilirubin is water insoluble, meaning that cannot what? get excreted through kidney. Are we together? If we cannot get a through through kidney that they keep accumulating within what body. But if we, your, liver, your liver is functioning well, what will happen, happen is the indirect bilirubin will be converted to what direct what bilirubin, of which now it becomes water soluble. And now we excrete it through what urinary uh, excretion, of which that's why you see the color of what? Urine most of the time is yellow in color, is it? That color is originating from this very process. Now, if your liver is not functioning, you, are, you, are, you won't get that very color. You will always get the clear color in the urine, and again, keep accumulating the body. And if this process happens mostly for the very little babies, the infants, it can complicate something called it can terrors, of which it affects the brain. And if it affects the brain, now your baby won't function normal. All those cognitive abilities, ability to read, the ability to grow in the mind issues won't be there. Are we together? Therefore, this is very complicated thing. And John, this is one of the things that you are going to see as a doctor because that is the clear indication. When you are doing like this, you will always see uh, there is a jaundice. So your skin all white of the eyes turn yellow and your pee turn brown or whitey, orange. So again, we'll see the light colored pops, the fever might be there, fatigue that persists for weeks or months, stomach trouble like loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, and also you see the bare pain. Those are, maybe uh, we can say together, these are not very well worthy, concentrated to tell you these are, this is the liver problem, is it? 
they are general symptoms. Therefore, as doctor, one of the indicator here to see is mostly the jaundice. We get. But as you have heard these stories about the fever and what what, you have to go further and do something with regard to the investigation. So this is the color that I say, you see, the normal person has to appear that way, but this one is what a jaundiced person. Of which this color again you won't see it in people who are what? Black people, like me. It's hard to see it, is it? But maybe you are going to observe with my writing the, the, the white color, color of, the, of my eyes. The major causes here, you see, conditions like yellow fever may cause the same problem. Therefore, as you are thinking of hepatitis, you have to have the idea of what again, yellow fever may present the cell. Again, glucose water, deficiency may present the cell. Viral what drugs, uh, we have pregnancy, there are some people who are having those problems. But today, apart from this, we have what? We have what? The hepatitis D virus. So if you say maybe this is the this is um, jaundice secondary to hepatitis B virus, this might be your what differentials. If someone is pregnant, one of the differential may be pregnant, is it? If someone is having maybe they have never received the yellow fever vaccine, you may think of it as well. Are you together? Yes. So uh, there's no kind of jaundice really here, but this one you see the part color of jaundice. But this is the normal liver. This is the morphology of normal liver. Then the liver early stage of the blood, this becomes inflamed. And whenever there is inflammation, means that there is increase in what in the blood supply of that area, is it? If there is increase, increase in, uh, blood, in the blood supply of that area, you will observe reddish, is it? And later on, what happened to the liver, this is the liver, become like a granulated liver. Now this liver cannot function normally. Are we together? And this is called the liver cirrhosis. And which may end up have what a liver cirrhosis now become even small, 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 and then later on you can find a very small liver. But apart from that, it can cause what a liver cancer. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So, this is again the jaundice as we spoke. Now, how is hepatitis B diagnosed? <coughs> so, if you think you are a patient habit, you need to do complete physical exam. You will observe those features as I say. Then test the blood to see if the liver is what? Inflamed. Now, here there is again a sign. <coughs> a liver perform a lot of functions. Are we together? We say it can produce protein. One of the protein which is produced by the liver is albumin. Then if you test for the liver and you find that it, maybe there is a very low albumin, means that there is possibility your liver is not functioning well. Are we together? Maybe you go and test and see for clotting factor. You find the clotting factor are very what? Low. This shows me that your liver is not functioning well. Are you together? Maybe you go and test it for enzymes which are found in the liver. We have two major enzymes which are found in the liver. Those major enzymes here are, we have the acid and we have the alat. These are enzymes which are mostly found in the what? In the liver. And they are found within the cell of the liver. Are we together? And for that reason, if there is any possibility for that particular person being sick of or being having a inflamed liver, this means that those enzymes will not be available within intracellular only. Now they will go outside. Are we together? And for that reason, we are going to find the elevated level of acid, elevated level of body, alert. In the body, actually, in the, in the normal blood, you will find a certain level of acid. You will find a certain level of alert. But for someone who is having inflamed liver, the level will what? Raise up. And if it has risen up, you have to think of inflammatory process which is taking place in what? In the liver. Are we together? So those are things which might happen. And for that reason, you test and find out maybe the liver is not functioning so well. The liver is not doing so well. And for that reason, what you have to do is you go specifically to testing if that particular patient is having this kind of body virus. Are we together? Have you seen the way we go together? So the first thing you look for the clinical symptoms as doctor, someone will come with complaint. From that very point, you will observe some signs which will show you because now you have read the story, you know what is hepatitis B. You may have a query of hepatitis B, is it? Now you go and ask for what? For liver functional test. We said the liver functional test, we have mentioned already. One of the most clear is the answer to the alert the albumin production, and other protein which are produced by the liver. If they are not produced in that normal state, means that the liver is not functioning well. 
And for that reason, means there is something happening in the liver. So, the next step is for you to go uh, and think of uh, tests which are very specific for this one, hepatitis B. Of which hepatitis B surface antigen and antibodies, they are the ones which are very specific. Are you together? Then we have hepatitis B surface antigen, as I said earlier, that the antigen are proteins of the hepatitis B virus. They show up in blood in 1 to 10 watty weeks after exposure. <coughs> and they go uh, away after 4 to 6 weeks. If they are still there after 6 months, the condition is watty, chronic. We have next is what hepatitis B surface watty antibody. Because if you have surface antigen, what we will, our body will respond with what? Antibodies, are we together? And for that reason, antibodies are protein made uh, by your, your immune cells. This show up after uh, hepatitis B surface antigen disappears. They, they are what you make you immune, what hepatitis B, Maybe these are the ones which will make you immune from hepatitis B, because they are going to help you if you, if you go to a point of what eliminating them. But if you are not able to eliminate them, they become, they, they, are, they will stay there, but you still have what? Surface antigen within your body. Are we together? So, other part of the diagnosis, the blood for serology can happen. We have other methods like ELISA. This, uh, uh, this is called the enzyme linked the immunosorbent assay. ELISA. Now, this one is again used. It uses the principle, the same principle, mostly the antigen antibody test. Then it counter immune electrophoresis. And we have also the PCR, which can be used <coughs> for, uh, for diagnosis of this particular disease. Drug of choice, most of the uh, drug which is used mostly in Tanzania, we have the alpha uh, interferons and lamipidine. You see, lamipidine have been used in, in what? In HIV. Which class of this, this drug is? Is it in any nucleoside or nucleoside? Yes? You remember, you really remember? Okay. So those are drugs. Most of drugs which are used for HIV, they are again used in term of what? Used for the treatment of hepatitis. Are you together? Now, prevention. A bilateral anti, anti uh, hepatitis B virus drug cannot eradicate the virus. Hence, lifelong treatment is usually required, as same as HIV. Then, the regular availability of this drug is in most of the low and middle income countries also problem. And for that reason, this necessity, the scaling up of preventive measure, especially in population that is high risk. If the drugs are not available, if the drugs are the same like the drug used for HIV, and I told you once that I say the cost for HIV is very high, are we together? If that is the reason means that this drug cannot easily get available. They are not easily what? Available. For a person who is sick from this disease may end up dying because there's no way he can afford the cost for this treatment. Therefore, for us to, to, to keep our people safe and ourselves, we have to scale up the issue of body prevention. We have to scale up the issue of body prevention. So we have another mechanism for prevention is what hepatitis B, like hepatitis B uh, virus vaccination. We have vaccine. We have what? Vaccine. This vaccine can be used very well. And therefore, an effective vaccine against the uh, virus B virus has been available since 1982. And it has been included in a pediatric vaccination program since 2002 in Tanzania. So the vaccine is being offered during four, eight, and weeks after the river. And all the people can also as well receive the vaccine, as I said. So uh, prevention. Injection surfeit, also sharp and waste management control is very important, especially for people who are health workers. If you are using um, a needle, make sure that that needle is well covered, or it is in a place whereby it indicates this there is a sharp watery object. Because without doing that, you may prevent yourself from getting the hepatitis, but your patient or your friend may touch that place, is it? And get infected. Again, the issue, another issue is a blood watery. Transfusion was, they have to be screened. Before blood transfusion, screening has to take place to identify if that particular blood is what infected. If you go, uh, if you go uh, in some, uh, we have published some of the paper on that regard. We have papers. If you can write just Jeremiah Pusat, there are a lot of papers which will come up with uh, this kind of publication. 
Healthworkers, due to their occupation, increase the risk of contracting hepatitis B viruses. Screening and vaccination to all health workers has, work, has to happen. And to maintain and which is greater than 10, are recommended for those who are wati, who are having hepatitis B surface wati antigen. Because they should have uh, less than 200 international unit meals per meal. In addition, for, for, for the exposure, for plaxis, with active wati vaccination. A non-immune has to be commenced immediately following the operation pattern. For people who are non-immune, means that if vaccination has to start ill as possible if you get exposed to this particular disease. And for those people who are having already a health worker but they are having this particular disease, means that you have to undergo wati to use the medication so that the viral load become less and less. Are we together? Because the more viral load becomes less and less, the less infectious it becomes. So if your viral load is very high, it means that you become more infectious. That's why even in HIV, we know that a mama or mother with a HIV, but with a very low viral load, means that there's high possibility for a kid to come up without body getting killed, being infected. But if a mother is having very high viral load, there's high possibility for that kid to get body infected. That's the same, even when you sex with someone who is having high viral load, the chance for HIV is high compared to someone, compared to someone who is having wati, no by the way. Right here. So we have hepatitis C. Disease caused by hepatitis C virus are the, mostly the same. So it is caused, it causes hepatitis. Also it causes hepatocellular carcinoma. So among hepatitis B and, uh, and C, hepatitis C is more worse or worse in terms of wati prognosis because it is easily, it can easily go to a hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatitis C virus infections sometimes result in acute illness, but most often become chronic conditions that can lead to the cirrhosis of the liver and liver cancer. So when you are, you, are, you, are, you are asked to compare these two viruses, hepatitis C virus can easily complicate to cancer. Can easily complicate to what? To cancer. And until now, I've not seen the vaccine. The, the We're no longer having, we maybe we are having development or what, what's happening, but we don't have vaccine already here in our city. So the risk for hepatitis C virus, the infection is present worldwide, although its prevalence varies in different regions. Travel at risk of infection in countries where the blood supply is not adequately screening. So Tanzania, is a, Tanzania have, it was among, but nowadays we are doing because we are now screening the blood. The transmission is required due to an injury. Humanitarian workers in health setting are also at risk because almost the same mechanism of transmission which happened in hepatitis B can happen in this particular disease. The symptom, in majority of the cases, the infection is asymptomatic, meaning that you cannot see symptom. Persons do not exhibit a symptom. Those with symptoms usually get ill six weeks to six, six months after exposure to viruses. In the acute phases, symptoms include fever, the same like we mentioned in the hepatitis B virus, the fatigue, the vomiting, nausea, abdomen pain, lack of appetite, dark urine, and jaundice. The same like hepatitis B viruses. So uh, we have a breast can develop with chronic infection after many years causing cirrhosis and liver cancer. Persons with acute or chronic and chronic hepatitis C are usually monitored to determine the best cause of treatment, which including taking water and the viral medication, as we mentioned before, but it's B virus. Uh, rheumatoid diagnosis, uh, other rheumatoid diagnosis, blood for serology can be used. The same mechanism can be used, uh, blood for serology, for example, ELISA, counter immunoerythrophoresis, the one that is used in the B virus. Almost the drug of choice, the same as used in the B virus, which is alpha interferon plus the Rivawati uh, virus. Those are things that you must remember. Prevention, there is a currently no preventive medication or vaccine against the hepatitis C virus, as I said earlier. So no the risk of activities you will be getting during your training to prevent any injuries. During your working hour, during anything that you're doing. The issue here is prevention. We don't have party, we don't have any way medication or vaccine. Avoid getting new PC or tattoo on the ship or anyway. 
Also, do not share needle or other bread. Also, if you need medical or dental care abroad, then ensure that it is done in a future work facility. If you need them, because they are easily infected, that is it. Yeah? If you need medical or dental care, the dental care uses the, uses the instrument, is it? Of which blood contamination or blood happens. Always practice safe sex, use condom correctly and consistently, and abstain from watching or abstain from the intercourse. Are we together? That marks the end of two presentations the RSV virus and the virus.